Now, in recent memory, the state of Facebook is quite complex. It has recently been renamed to Meta. It owns a lot of different companies like WhatsApp and Instagram, and there's a lot of controversies behind it too. Um, that being said, there are some great things that came from Facebook, and one of those amazing things is React.js. What's going on, guys? My name is Suboptimal, and today I want to go over the history of React.js. First, we're going to take a look at who created React and why they made it in the first place by examining the state of web development technologies back when React was created. Then we're going to take a look at the rise of React, and this is going to include how it was able to start becoming the main front end framework that almost every company in Silicon Valley used. Then I'm going to take a look at how React was able to sort of reintroduce itself with React hooks and how that totally changed the game of front end development. And before we get started, I'm just going to ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is to leave a like on the video for the YouTube algorithm. I do spend quite a bit of time playing and editing these videos, so just a small like goes a long way in helping me and the channel out. Cool. With that out of the way, Let's get started with the history of React.js. So in order to really understand React, we have to look at some of the technologies that came out right at that time. So there was Angular, there was Backbone.js, there was Ember.js. These were like the popular frameworks back in the day. And that's when Jordan Walk just kind of walks into Facebook and creates React all the way in 2013. And the main differentiating factor that React had that, you know, these other applications didn't have was JSX. And of course, it was also easy to get started with. But the point is that in JSX, you can, you know, include HTML into your JavaScript. So every single piece of front end code was just in a JavaScript class. And that changed the way you thought about front end and why it became super popular. Now let's talk about the rise of React.js. Now I know it's definitely not the case now because Facebook is always in a lot of fighter and they just rebranded to metaverse or whatever. But back in 2010s, Facebook was the company to work at, right? It was something that even Google was afraid of. And so they were so afraid of it that they built Google Plus because Facebook was up and coming. It was basically taking away talent from the top tech companies like Netflix and Google. And it was acquiring the best companies like Instagram and WhatsApp. And the reason I'm talking about how successful Facebook was and, and talking about Facebook's dominance in Silicon Valley is to drive home the point that its business success, you know, the fact that it was getting a lot of investors and money allowed it to invest in the best developers in the world, right? Every, all the best developers went to Silicon Valley and Facebook was able to get the best of the best, right? The best of the people from Google, the best of the talent from the world, use all the money and resources it had to, and build that into React. First, it started off at Facebook, then Instagram decided to adopt it. And you know, all the companies around like Discord, Twitch, Netflix, and even Google um, started to use React inside of their projects. That being said, um, it wasn't all Facebook, right? There was a huge developer community that was starting to come along with React. So they we they started making things like Gatsby and Next.js, which is absolutely huge now. It has over like 70,000 stars on GitHub. Standalone JavaScript framework called Redux, which is now sort of just synonymous with React. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the fact that Facebook was able to succeed, helped React succeed. That's when you realize that React is going to stay for a really long time. And of course, the next part is going to be React hooks. And now, and the reason I'm putting React hooks, which was introduced in 2019 into its own component, not part of React, if React hooks totally changed the way that you write your JavaScript code. So before, um, you know, you had to do this weird thing called constructor props and then put in the super and then you would be like this dot state, this dot set state, this dot state dot count. And, you know, basically you would use a lot of references to this because, you know, that's just sort of how React was running under the hood. But with the uh, introduction of React hooks, um, the code got super simplified. 
you know, this I would say is sort of like React 2.0. And what I do want to mention is that this code on the right, I think this code is hard to read and hard to use. And, and, and it just makes you wonder how much like more difficult it may have been to work with things like Angular or uh, Backbone JS. Because if I think this code is hard to use, but I never even used, you know, these frameworks, then I wonder, you know, what made people switch from these frameworks to React, right? Because I don't know how hard those frameworks are, but, you know, it just makes you like think a little bit about how sort of revolutionary React was. So I would say like, you know, going from these frameworks to React is sort of like the uh, 1.0 initial jump. And then going from the old React to React 2.0 is the, again, the second uh, revolutionary thing that happened for React. So yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a little bit of understanding of the history of React, who made it, how it got popular, and sort of the rebirth of React with uh, React hooks. As always, thanks for watching, and consider subscribing for more suboptimal content just like this. I'll catch you guys next time.